God's people, welcome to worship on this very first Sunday in Advent, something we welcome with contemplation and with joy. I'm the Reverend Chris Johnson, I'm pastor here at College Hill, and I'm so happy that you have pulled into our parking lot this morning. Let me let you know who else is in this space today. Um, we have with us our music director, Gwen Michael, who you've already uh, heard celebrating some of the songs of the Advent season. And we have with us to help, especially in leading music this morning, Ben and Christy Wallace. And uh, they'll, Christy will be providing our special music today. And Ben sort of doing utilitarian work as he uh, fills out some of the voices in the liturgy. We'll sing the Hosanna this morning and we'll welcome his help there. And he is our video technician this morning. So thanks for all that. I wanna give a special thank you to the folks who are attending the parking lot this morning. I think the Penroses are the folks on duty out there, but I especially wanna thank them and their crew of sacristans who have uh, tried to make it as normal as possible uh, for us to celebrate by, by installing decorations and getting ready for the season, passing out bulletins, which is new to us uh, after a hiatus of that, uh, putting candles in the windows. And if you look up, you'll see that there is a Moravian star hanging in the church belfry uh, this season to be a witness to the world. So that's all wonderful. If you are visiting with us, we're especially glad to have you. And we welcome back the Westside Moravian Church folks. Um, we are so happy that you are with us and, and uh, sharing the season together. And the Reverend Tammy Rinker will be um, helping co-lead worship this morning. And I'm gonna throw it to Tammy. Good morning and thank you for the warm welcome. It is a joy to be back with you. This surge in our virus uh, has brought us back and what a wonderful thing to be welcomed by our neighbors and to worship together. And it is with joy that I invite you to greet us and one another with a peep of your horn, please. <laughs> we should get horns in here, Chris, or would that be too much? <laughs> that's, that's kind of a good idea. We'll work on that. So good to have you all in this time and in this space. And let me just highlight one thing. I'll, I'll give some announcements later on, but before I forget, please know that we are working in this space, in this sanctuary to make it compatible for live streaming our worship services. So that will be coming. That will not put an end to parking lot worship. And I hope somebody is always out there to beep at us on at any given worship service. But as early as next Sunday, we, we are hoping uh, to be able to live stream this service for those who can't be in the parking lot. So uh, look for information about that to come. But now on this holy day, this Advent day, let's prepare our hearts to worship God with our full presence. And we'll make that transition as we listen to the prelude. Thank you. 
please join in the litany of light and warmth as you'll find, a, find it in your worship handout. Times have been harsh. We have known the fear and frenzy that accompanies uncertainty. Times have been edgy. We have known the danger and darkness of dancing with terror. Times have been tense. We have known the collective anxiety of a world draped in chaos. Times have been stressful. We have longed for a world draped in soft folds of security. Holy God, come to us. Wrap us in the promise of your incarnation. Blanket us when all we wish to do is hide beneath the cover of your presence. And one more thing, holy God. Be a light to us, like one candle of Advent, warming our brittle hearts and showing us the path to hope. Let's sing 274, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry when we sinned, because you hid yourself and transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquities. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. Were we all, we all, we are all the work of your hands. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord. Do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all We welcome Christy Wallace, who will be singing for us this morning. And she's singing a brand new piece of music. And I wanted to point out that Light in Our Darkness was written specifically very recently in this year of pandemic. And it was written, words and music, by our own church member here, uh, Joe Plofert. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> We hear from Mark's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Jesus is speaking. In those days, after, there's, after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they'll see the human one, the Son of Man, coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. And then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn the parable from the, from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. 
In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son. Only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It's as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Stay alert. We sing 265, Savior of the Nations Come. Site Velvet Hamster led off with this headline. Does hiding under the covers protect against coronavirus? The CDC hasn't said no. Then the seriously presented article went on to say, many are speculating that hiding under the covers could mean added protection against coronavirus, and research doesn't directly refute that. The CDC has so far declined to comment on whether or not hiding under your bed covers can help combat coronavirus, giving hope to this new theory. There is no telling how many additional lives can be saved if more people spent time hiding under the covers, in large part because the CDC, CDC won't say how many, if this will work at all. The CDC has not responded to multiple requests for comment, but independent research so far has shown that people spending added time hiding under the covers are less likely to come into contact with anything at all. <laughs> Velvet Hamster is, of course, a satirical website, like The Onion or The Babylon Bee. 
It's a spot for topical humor, and it pokes and it provokes. Uh, who wouldn't want this to be true? Who wouldn't want to simply hide under the covers, not having to face the day, not having to acknowledge the real news that, well, for example, just yesterday in the United States, 91,635 people were hospitalized because of COVID-19, the highest total yet in a 17-day string of numbers above 80,000. Who wouldn't want to hide? Who wouldn't want to get cozy, to be cozy, to stay cozy, if only to block out reality? Last spring, about the time everyone was being either asked or actually required to shelter in place uh, because of that first wave of the virus, there was a resurgence in, um, in finding ways to have old-fashioned fun at home. And especially in families uh, that had young children, uh, the popularity of building blanket forts uh, surged. And why not? Why not upend the kitchen chairs, repurpose the couch cushions, drape a bedspread over the dining room table, and hide out? This was such a terrific idea that the furniture manufacturer IKEA, they actually published diagrams and instructions with parts labeled in Swedish for how to build six different types of blanket forts. It's when we feel most vulnerable that we recognize we would prefer to feel secure, to feel sheltered, to feel protected. This has been a year when much of our typical collective sense of self-sufficiency has just flown the coop. We are susceptible in ways we may have never imagined, and we want to be safeguarded. We want to be safe. We want to be saved. The language of salvation, I will confess, has never been verbiage that I'm very comfortable with. I always thought it belonged to kind of the holy rollers, the, you know, the fundamentalists. And for as long as I can remember, I have known deep assurance that I am loved by God. And there's nothing that can separate me from that. And that, spiritually speaking, I'm good to go for eternity. But it has occurred to me in recent months that perhaps my spiritual self feels invulnerable because my physical self has never really been particularly threatened. In health and in wealth, I have always been blessed. I have always been part of a loving family that really only has a little bit of dysfunction to it. I have never known hunger. I have always had a roof over my head, and, and actually it's always been a sturdy roof at that. I've always lived in good neighborhoods, free from all the most random of crimes. I have been educated, I have had access to opportunities. I have car insurance, property insurance, health insurance, life insurance. I have never wanted. I have barely ever known what it, what it is to need to be rescued in this life. And I guess that proves that privilege has its privileges. How could I know what it is to feel as though God might not already and always have my back? I have always adored the Advent season, the careful unpacking of beautiful objects, stars and candles and nativity scenes and ornaments, the preparations, the temporal ones and the spiritual ones, getting ready for when Christmas comes. And while I have always found, found it heartwarming, I'm not sure that I have ever felt Advent to be jarring, jarring. I am not sure that I have ever fully appreciated the words of scripture that launch us on this journey 
the cries to God for rescue, for God to come down out of the heavens made by the ancient people, the, the call from, from people who felt abandoned by God. I'm not sure I've ever really been moved by the warnings from Jesus himself that things could and would get real bad. If any of you saw my blog post yesterday, you'll know that the Johnson family has kept our Moravian star hanging and lit throughout the pandemic as a sign of hope to the world. And you'll also know that I turned it off last night. Um, I turned it off so that we could relight it today for the start of Advent. And with it off, I did sit in the darkness and I pondered the absence of its glow, and I really did truly feel at a loss. I sat in the dark and I pondered all that would be missing from my life if I didn't know the assurance of God's grace. If I didn't rely on having a, a warm, wise, wonderful companion guide in the person of Jesus, if I didn't simply just know at my core of the Spirit's presence with me always, without all this, I would surely cry out for help. I would surely cry out, Hosanna, save me. Save me now and mean it. Our Advent traditions tell us that God's love is like a light the light of the star, the light of a candle, and that it not only guides us where it's most optimal for us to go, that's how God sets it up for us, um, but it's also about God accompanying us along the way. In this particular time and place, and that would be the year 2020, in a parking lot, I would like us to add a new symbol to our repertoire. I would like us to wrap up in the idea that God's love is like a blanket. God's love is like a blanket you want to hide under, the covers you never want to crawl out from under. It's a layer of protection against our own vulnerability, that coating that helps life from being so very raw that we couldn't possibly stand to live it. We know that hiding under the covers or building a blanket fort will never afford us the armament we need to fend off the harshest of realities, realities of pain, of suffering, realities of death. Neither does the blanket of God's love prevent these things. What it does, though, is to provide enough softness that we might bear what is harshest. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. Before rushing on to create a Christmas that seems kind of normal, sort of familiar, in this year that is anything but. Let's be sure to spend some time in our blanket forts, under the covers, to ponder how we are poor and imperfect, how we are vulnerable, and how we do indeed need rescue. And then to look forward to what is great, to who is great. Let's gather our courage so that we might come out from under those covers and discover ways to partner with our Savior in blanketing the hurting world with his love. Let's pray. Holy, precious one, let us never uh, forget to approach you to be with you, to be in your presence, and to do so with, with seriousness, with, with joyful seriousness, but with seriousness no less. Let us ponder what we might not want to ponder, 
and let us be willing to be disturbed by you, but only because we know that you comfort us. Bring your comfort, your help, your hope to all those who are in need, those who are sick, those who are in treatment, those who are awaiting diagnoses, those who are expecting a call from their surgeon to schedule something, those who are in the aftermath, those who are maybe walking their last days here on earth, those who grieve, be a blanket to all of them. Be a, a blanket, be a comfort to all those who suffer in other ways in this life, not just in, in body, not just in grief, but, but in trouble. Uh, those who worry about where the next meal comes from or how the heating bill is going to be paid or will there be work next week? And what do we do with the kids when they're home from school? And how do we proceed with all the added complications that we deal with these days? Be with those who suffer in mind, who suffer in spirit, who despair, be the blanket that they can hide under. Holy One, hear us, help us, lead us, guide us, and always wrap us in your warmth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let me give a few announcements here. Uh, we will wrap up with the Advent Liturgy in a moment. Uh, let me give you a bit of instruction there. You will find it on page uh, 49. And if you've ever been to a Moravian uh, service on the first day of Advent, you know that in the middle of that liturgy, you got to keep your thumb in the book, flip to page 239, sing the Hosanna, and then flip back to where you started and, and conclude. Um, when I sing the Hosanna this morning in the sanctuary, Ben is going to sing part one, Christy and I are going to sing part two, but you're in your car. You can sing whatever part you like, and if you're one of those folks who like to try and sing both parts simultaneously, this is your chance to do that as well, but just know that that will be coming. I um, want to let you know about several things we are collecting in Advent and something we are not. We are suspending our plastics collection for the time being. Uh, we will start back up collecting that in the, in the new year to collect those and to bless them and to deliver them to New Bethany Ministries where they will be put to good use. Uh, we do have some openings uh, in the Unity Prayer Watch. Our turn is coming up on Friday, and most slots are booked. Um, it's fine to double book them, and anybody can pray um, any hour, but we specifically have need for prayers at 1.30 in the afternoon, 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. They're not even the awful hours. Um, if you are available to pray in any of those slots, please call the office. Um, let us know which slot you would like to have. You can leave us a message and we'll continue to fill out our prayer chart. I think I will let it be uh, there. Uh, can, can we do anything we need to announce? Not, not at this time. And um, just uh, keep your eyes open. Um, uh, you should have gotten uh, uh, an electronic newsletter this week, and if you don't receive them that way, the hard copy is in the mail. So let us uh, finish out our service as, as I described in praying the Advent Liturgy, remembering to flip to page 239 uh, where it tells you to do that. But for now, we begin on page 49. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
Rejoice greatly and shout for joy, for your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. <laughs> long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. You have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our by your tender mercy, you cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord, and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins, so that our crooked ways will be made straight, and the rough ways smooth. Gracious Lord Jesus, you come to us with the good news of salvation, but too often we fail to know it. You come to us day by day, yet we close the doors of our hearts when it seems convenient to do things our own way. We ignore your presence and your leadership. We have failed to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Forgive us, mercy. May we live so that the world will know that you have come. Amen. Through John the Baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins, and God will forgive your sins. you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ.
strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you, and even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ, as you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophet. May people today believe in your good will for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a Redeemer in the life death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gift of the Holy Spirit that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not be we long for you to inspire all the nations and the people of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen. Page 239. <laughs> you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. You remember to show mercy to Abraham and Sarah and to all their descendants forever. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Thank <laughs>
let us let us live in the comfort of his love like he's draping us as though we were a blanket and let us go into this world and make it a little softer all in your name holy one we pray amen Thank you.